Hey guys, SuperPow here, and today I am back with another Cinema 4D Minecraft animation tutorial. I wasn't really planning to really continue the series, but you guys have been asking for me to make episode 2 like I said I would, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Now, in this episode, what I'm going to be mainly focusing on is how to import Minecraft worlds and a bit of lighting, possibly. But, I, yeah, we'll, we'll probably most definitely get to lighting because it, it doesn't take very long to do. And importing Minecraft worlds should take maybe five minutes max, so... Basically, all you're going to need for this tutorial is Cinema 4D itself. Uh, I think for most of the stuff in the tutorial, you can use any version. I'm using Cinema 4D Studio, as you can see here. But the other tool you're going to need, it's free, is JMC to OBJ. Uh, there is a competing program called Mineways. Some people prefer it, but for the tutorial, I'm going to use JMC to OBJ. Now, what an OBJ file is, I'm just going to go ahead and open this. What an OBJ file is, is it's kind of, think of it as like world geometry. When you export a Minecraft world, it stores the little world in an OBJ file, and then when you put that in Cinema 4D, it actually makes the world, because it reads the file. So I'm just going to pick a random world, I guess, because you have to actually have a world for it to work. So, I don't know. We'll just go with a random one. Choose save folder. Okay, and then once you pick a world by clicking on this, these three dots, going inside of your one of your save worlds, and then clicking choose save folder, you click the load button, and it should load up the world. But I'm not sure if this there is some stuff here. Yeah, this is. I'm I'm gonna pick a different one. I don't. I think this one was one that glitched out on me. We'll, we'll just do that. Alright, this should work good. So when you load a world, it'll bring up something like this, depending on what chunks you've loaded in the world. But, for the purpose of this tutorial, this should be more than enough, even though there's not a whole lot of world actually generated here. So, to select part of the world, you just want to hold down left click and drag over the area you want. So, I don't know. Yeah, I'll probably just go with a decently uh, sized area. I'm not going to go too crazy or anything, but this will serve its purpose. Now, there's, there's no real settings you'll need to change inside the settings button, if you're actually wondering about that, but you will actually have to do a little bit of tweaking that I'm about to show you. Now, for me, I'm already completely set up to export this as is. Just click the export button, and it'll export flawlessly for me. But I'm going to show you a few settings that you can change to your liking. I'll give you what I recommend and tell you what the settings do. So you can choose if you want to do something different, but I'm going to go ahead and start explaining. So inside of export options, after clicking the export button up here, it'll bring up this little menu. I I strongly recommend checking uh, changing it from none to center for the first setting which is offset. Now what that does is if you check none, if you import the Minecraft world, uh, the Minecraft world will be somewhere off into the viewport where you can't see it if you select none. But if you check center, it'll be right it'll end up being right here where you can get to it and see it easily. So I strongly recommend uh, changing it to center. Okay, I don't really know what Render Biomes does by itself, but it should be automatically checked and just leave it as is. It doesn't do anything as far as I know. I like to do create a separate object for each material. What that does is, is say like water and grass are both different materials, and it'll create different materials down here in your materials section in Cinema 4D, so that if you want to say make I don't know, a nether portal glow. You could add a glow effect specifically to it by checking the glow box or something without affecting anything else. If you don't intend to do anything like that, you don't have to use this, but I recommend it. Uh, you can also, if you want to, you can create a separate object inside of Cinema 4D for each chunk rather than one giant object. You can create a separate object for each block, but I, re I recommend using this on very small areas because this is, will make the file extremely large and probably crash Cinema 4D. 
unless you're if you're doing trying to do a really large area and you check this box with the little exclamation mark next to it you will probably crash Cinema 4D. Alright, so you can use a single material for the whole export. I'd, I don't really like doing that. It, uh, it doesn't allow me to change things because, you know, if you're in the middle of creating something and you decide, oh, I want this to have some effect, well, I don't want all the everything else to have that same effect. You can't do that if you use a single material. You just don't have as much freedom with it, but you can use it if you want to. It does make uh, the file a little bit smaller and, it, and it, I think Cinema 4D does react to it a little bit better. And then one other thing that you can do, if you don't check this you'll have to automatically like uh, what it'll do is is say that we're gonna use this uh, material dot one right here as grass. We'll just say that m regular material is water. For this, you'd have to go in and specifically pick out the texture for water. I'm, I'm going to uh, get to where you'll see all of these textures here in a minute. But for this, since it's grass, you'd have to go through and find grass uh, and pick out that texture specifically. And then for water, you'd have to go over and find water inside of here. And that can be very time consuming for if you're just trying to get something done. So. I recommend using a single texture file and instead of having to go through and do everything uh, separately, well a different texture for every object, you just go through and drag over the all of the different materials that it creates, select them all, and then you just go through and there will be a texture labeled text, and or texture I mean, I just put in text just to find it inside of the textures folder that we'll export in a minute. But when you select this, it'll give all of them the same texture file, and they'll all come out working good. Uh, it's just a whole lot simpler this way to use a single texture file. To enable it, you'll just have to click Browse, and in a minute when we export the textures, uh, where I just exported them to a folder labeled Text, but you'll have to select a .uv file. Oh, let me see if I can find it. Oh yeah, Texture.uv. It'll be scattered inside of here, but that's just what it's labeled as. You just pick that and click save, but I've already got it so I don't need to. And you can choose whether or not to overwrite pre-existing OBJ files and MTL files. To be honest, I don't know what the MTL files do exactly, but I know that you do need them. But you can also rename the files so that you don't have any... So like if you want to have multiple of them in the same folder, uh, they won't overwrite each other. So for this, I'm going to change these to tutorial. I'm going to change the MTL file over to that. Alright, there we go. And then we just click close. And they'll both come out named as that when we click export. Alright, so now that we've gotten through these options, we're going to move over to the texture options. Now, what it's going to do is is when you export them from uh, the textures from Minecraft because it'll automatically pull the textures out for you if you click this button it'll pull out the textures from the most recently installed version of Minecraft so keep this in mind uh, I have no control over uh, what version of Minecraft you guys have most recently installed so if your most recently installed version was like version 1.4 then it's going to pull textures from that rather than if you had like for me, I have my mo latest version is like 1.7.9. It'll pull the textures from that and you'll have all of the new ones. So that's just to uh, give you guys a heads up about that. So don't come complaining to me if it doesn't export all the latest textures. But I don't know where it'll automatically set this. You can change it to be at, uh, at your desktop if you want to. It doesn't really matter, but it'll ex automatically export it to the this folder labeled text on your desktop and it'll get filled with all of this but anyways on with, on with this okay so I'm I'm assuming that if you guys are following the tutorial you probably clicked this by now and if you do click it this thing will start slowly going through and on here it'll say that it, it's exporting textures from whatever version of Minecraft you most recently installed in here and it'll throw them into whatever folder is set here so that should be simple enough for you guys. If you don't, okay, but here's one other thing. If you check this box that says export alpha channel in separate files, 
uh, just to give you guys an idea of what an alpha channel is, see uh, all of these or most of these have an uh, a, ver and a duplicate version of the texture. <laughs> wow, I was, I was stuttering right there. Well, anyways, do you see that they have a duplicate texture with the underscore A and they're all white? That's an alpha channel. What an alpha channel does is, in textures, if you have an alpha channel applied to something, it'll make it see-through. So like for glass, let's see if I can find, wow, oh, I'm not even going to try and find this, but close enough. But you know for glass how it's transparent from the sides? That's what an alpha channel does. It makes it transparent. So, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, well anyways. You might as well just leave the export alpha channel separately. But here's something else you're going to need. You're going to need to export the textures uh, with this box unchecked once and then check it again. And uh, then actually check the box and export it a second time. And what this will do is if you don't have it checked, uh, that box checked, uh, yeah, if you don't have this checked, it'll create all of these little files right here. And this can be helpful to you later on to have these. But if you do check it, it'll create these files. Yeah, it'll create the texture.png and the texture.uv. So you'll need those. So you'll have to do it once without this checked, once with it checked. Just run it twice in a row, and there you go, you've got all that you need. And then you're completely free to go ahead and click the export button. Let me go ahead and close that. So yeah, not, once you've got all that, I'm going to click export and it should start processing chunks inside of here. This, this could take a little while depending on how large of an area you selected. I actually picked a pretty large area so it's not surprising but it's taking a little while. Yeah if we look over here on task manager yeah it's single threaded guys so it, it is kind of slow if you have a a newer computer with a whole lot of cores and stuff but it gets the this pro program gets the job done so I'm not complaining let's go ahead and move this back over there all right come on hurry up we got things to do this episode alright so yeah now it's sorting the OBJ file that's very important Alright, so now that it's done, if you looked wherever you have it set to export, which should be this, I just have it set to my desktop. It'll come out wherever is listed right here though. For me, it's my desktop. And you have the tutorial.obj and tutorial.mtl just like I showed you to rename. Okay, anyways, you'll want to take the tutorial.obj or whatever you named yours and drop it into Cinema 4D. And if you're going to get a regular scale, like the actual scale of Minecraft, just leave these two boxes checked, set this to 100 centimeters. That makes it actually physically correct for Minecraft, uh, and it's actually the correct size for most Minecraft rigs, so just set it to 100 centimeters. And then click OK, and it'll start importing it down here. Now. I'm not sure if I have uh, exported this right because I was testing some stuff earlier. So I may need to come back and relook at this uh, after I pause the recording, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that it should be right. So if it'll finish exporting. Alright, so it looks like it. Yeah, I did it right. It was just being slow because I'm in the middle of a recording. All right, but anyways, it'll when you import it, uh, it'll look something like this. And you guys are probably wondering why the heck is it all gray? Well, this is because none of your materials are set up down here. Now, for me, uh, I I have very few materials compared to what I normally would have. Uh, depending on what area you ex uh, you exported from your world, you could have more or less than I do, depending on what blocks are actually there and what textures it'll actually need to use. But for me, I've just got this amount. And as you can see, the program, uh, it doesn't export the sides of the world, but you can change that if you want to. If you go in here and 
check the box render world sides and bottom that's not really needed most of the time but that's just to let you guys know that that's an option if you really need that alright so now to go ahead and get into texturing now you guys are probably thinking oh great but this is actually extremely simple if you did it the way I told you now, or at least the simple way I told you to do it so if you just go here and in your materials thing you just drag all the way across all of these select them all at once you go to the color section right here click the three dots find the uh, the texture.png that it should have created for you click it and click open and it may take a second yep it just took a second to load you change okay this is extremely important right here change sampling to none just make sure that you've done that because it likes to filter the minecraft textures which makes them blurry now the minecraft textures are gonna look blurry in the viewport but if you render this out which I'm not sure how well it's yeah see if you render it out they do come out looking normal but I'm guessing you guys are thinking why are there is there black around the flowers well that's because we haven't done an alpha channel yet which as I told you handles texture transparency and makes leaves and flowers and stuff transparent so let's go ahead and move on to that just as long as you've made sure to change sampling to none if you have all of them, all of them selected at once it'll change it back to multiple not sure why but it's just as long as you did it you should be fine uh, you will want to uncheck specular I don't know if it's uh, what it does is see this little sh uh, kind of gl I don't know sheen on the texture I, I just don't honestly like that I think it makes it look a whole lot nicer inside of the Minecraft uh, scenes to uncheck the specular but this is a entirely opinionated so you can do whatever you like best but you can, but next to do the alpha channels you need to check the box that says alpha under the basic tab so we'll click alpha and it'll give you this new menu labeled alpha and all you have to do is the same as with color you click the three dots I'm just gonna go ahead and search for the texture you just click the same texture file click open do the same thing with sampling set it to none and voila as you can see if we go ahead and render this out all of the textures should no longer have that weird blackish glitch yeah I see all of it see-through but now I'm pretty sure you guys are thinking wow this looks ugly which you are entirely right this this is extremely ugly but that's because we don't have lights of any kind and ju just for the sake of the tutorial I'm gonna I'm just gonna go through and throw all, group all these objects so that they don't get in the way up here now if you saw what I did I just selected them all and then right clicked and clicked group object if you want to know how to do that and we'll just label this minecraft close enough okay so now that we've done that this what I'm about to do is probably entirely optional as to whether or not you want to do it but depend but I'm just gonna go ahead and set this up how I think I would want it to be set up but you can click this camera button or add camera go to camera and it'll create a camera directly where you're looking and see now if you move around that camera doesn't move so if you go up here to the cameras tab go to use camera go back to your camera that you just created uh, you can go back to the exact same spot but don't move once you're here if you want the camera to stay in the same place let me see if I can actually Oh, okay here we go so if you guys want to protect the camera so that it can no longer move if you want it to stay in this exact same spot I'm not gonna I don't think I'm gonna make an animation out of this I'm just gonna show you guys how to set up the lighting now but if you don't want the camera to be able to move right click it go to cinema 4d tags which should be the first little menu go over here go down about halfway to the protection tag you click that and I don't think that you should be able to move it but I'm just gonna make sure yeah I'm not even able to click this so if you want to remove the protection tag you just click on it and push the delete key on your keyboard yeah that should get rid of it just click the delete key or push the delete key on your keyboard I mean and that'll make it movable again 
So now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do the lighting now that I've got my camera set up. So for lighting, what I like to do is you can, there's probably thousands of different ways to do exactly what I'm about to do. It's basically entirely however you feel that you want to go about lighting your scene. So I mean, you could just put a standard little light. Uh, think of it as like just a light bulb sitting out in the middle of nowhere and light your scene. You could use a giant spotlight on your scene and it, it would light it decently. You could use a target light, an area light, or an, just an infinite light if you don't want shading and everything, or just go f straight for a sun. There's hundreds of different ways that you could actually do this, but what I like to do is create a, a physical sky. When you create a physical sky, as you can see, it goes ahead and adds shading to your scene, and it creates a sky-looking thing inside the viewport. And let's see, I'll show you guys a, a before and after of, the, of having the sky. We'll just click render. Alright, this could take a second. Alright, yeah, so as you guys can see, that's pretty ugly. Alright, so I'll go ahead and check back on the physical sky. Click render. And this this will take a bit longer now that there's shading involved. And as you guys can see, this is much, much nicer looking. It's, it's very low resolution and isn't exactly great looking because we haven't gotten into messing with settings yet, but it, it's a very, very marginal improvement as you guys can see. So, yeah, that's what the physical sky does. It adds a bit, bit of shading. So, let's see. You can go in and tweak the physical sky, change it however you like. There are sky pre uh, presets depending on what you want. I'm going to stick with the way I have it set up. You can add clouds if you want to and then check volumetric if you want them to be volumetric clouds. But seeing as how from the camera that I'm going to use, you can't see the sky. There's no purpose in that. Uh, sunbeams, I don't think that even works really so don't even bother using that the rainbow checkbox will actually add a rainbow just to give tell you guys that fog kind of adds a foggy effect near the edges but I'm not going to use it and you can change this since it's a physical sky it actually is physically correct so you can change the time of day and, and, and things like that uh, so that is an option so if, if we change it to like that it does actually change the time of day. So let's see. Oh, well, I'm, I'm gonna sit here and tweak this until I decide I like it. Let's go ahead and render this. I generally uh, like evening scenes. I always find those to be, you know, they seem to just gen generally look nicer to me. And another thing that you will notice is that scenes generally don't look quite as nice if the shadows are facing away from the camera. If the shadows face towards the camera, people will generally think that the scene looks much nicer. Because you see it kind of looks flat here. But for day just standard daytime scenes, if the camera's moving, it, it wouldn't have, there wouldn't be any problem with it, but just for, you know, just a picture like I'm planning to do, it probably, probably wouldn't be the best idea. Alright, so, I think I'm, no, I don't want to change that, don't, don't tell me to change it. I'm pretty sure my computer can handle this. Alright, so, I think that this probably is going to be pretty good and uh, for this, I'm, I'm just going to try and save time here. I mean, it looked pretty good in the last render. So I think that it is probably just good enough for the purpose of this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and try and wrap this up pretty soon. I know you guys are probably getting pretty bored by now. <laughs> but for those of you who are still watching, I I'm almost done. And then you guys will know how to light your scenes pretty decently. But I will tell you that the only way to perfect it is to toy around with it. Just figure out what you honestly think looks good. I can tell you whatever I think looks good, but it, uh, you can only make it as good as you think it looks. And then hope other people think it looks good too. Alright, so that, but anyways, now that we've got that, we, uh, I suppose we could change our render settings a bit. 
Now, I'm assuming most of you at least know how to do this, but if you go to output, you can change the render resolution. I'm going to use 1080p, or not 1080p, 720p, just to speed this up a bit. 720p is 1280 by 720. And you know what? I'll actually be back in a second. Alright, so I'm back. I actually just had to uh, go downstairs to get the, my sandwich for dinner. <laughs> but anyways, I'm back now. So let's get on with this. I'm running out of time here to finish this tutorial. Okay, but anyways, now that we've set this to 720p, uh, we can... I'm not gonna buy... I like to use the physical render engine, but I'm just trying to help as many people as possible here. And I know some versions of Cinema 4D don't have the physical engine. Uh, the physical engine is physically based, so it's a little bit more realistic, but I'll stick with standard just to, you know, help more people out. But there are two major effects that you can add, and that would be ambient occlusion and global illumination. Uh, I'm just going to add both of them for the purpose of this tutorial. When I'm able to catch, uh, that boosts the quality tremendously. I highly recommend it. And you also, I also highly recommend clicking Evaluate Transparency as an option. That prevents weird graphical errors if something's clear. And then Global Illumination simulates light bouncing around. Uh, whereas, you know, normally light from the sun doesn't just hit something and stop, it bounces. This is what that simulates. And I'm just going to change the record density to low on both of these, just to save a little bit of time. It doesn't, there's not a whole lot of difference between uh, low and medium, like these are set on, but uh, if you want the best quality, just set it to medium. But now that we have this set up, I think we should be good to go to do a test render. So let's go ahead and bring this up and let it render out. Please note this will take a, a bit longer to actually render, so. And by a bit longer, I mean this could be a difference of several minutes. So I'm just I'm just warning you of this. Am ambient occlusion and global illumination are two extremely uh, high resource uh, intensive tasks. So they they will slow down your rendering speed by a lot. So you may want to test to make sure they're actually worth that extra render time. Hmm. So. You can test it, but I'm not going to. But all you have to do is turn them on and off and just see if it generally, genuinely is worth that extra minute of render time. But if we look at this, this is actually pretty good looking, even though it's only 720p. Just for the purpose of this tutorial, uh, it's good enough just to show you guys what you can honestly get in 30 minutes or less. This is the kind of stuff that I could whip out if I wanted to. I spend a whole lot more time tweaking the lighting. And as I told you guys, the lighting is only as good as you think it is. So don't. Uh, so I can tell you what I think looks good. But if you're going to do lighting, do it for what you think looks good, not what somebody else does. But I think that looks pretty good. It could use a little bit... Uh, it could use some work, but... That just shows you guys what you can get pretty quickly. Now, I think that I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this tutorial now. I'm pretty sure that I've covered more than enough for one episode now. So, you know what? Thank you guys for watching. I hope that this tutorial has actually helped some people out. And you know what? If the, if the tutorial helped you and I actually showed you something that you did not know, uh, leaving a like would be appreciated. <laughs> Because I put I put a lot of time in these tutorials. I've actually been preparing for this for a little while, but anyways, you know I hope you have enjoyed the video, and I hope that it has helped you uh, with an animation, some kind of picture you're trying to create, an idea uh, that you're trying to bring to reality. But thanks for watching, and I will see all of you guys later. Goodbye.